Hello and welcome to Throttle Up. A new car with the old bells and whistles or just a fine old wine in a new bottle? Well, this is the question that we are here to figure out in this review of the Skoda Kushak Monte Carlo variant. The Monte Carlo variant sits even higher than this top of the line style variant and adds few cosmetic features in the Skoda Kushak. Now obviously the Monte Carlo is priced higher than the style variant. The question is, does it deliver on that premium? Would few cosmetic features here and there deliver on that aspiration of actually buying that Octavia RS which is now discontinued and you wanted a sportier version of your favorite Skoda? Well, let's see, does this actually suffice that Skoda Octavia RS is need or is it just one gimmicky variant? Now this is a key fob which is practically identical to one that you get in the normal Skoda Kushaks with three buttons for the tailgate and the door lock and unlock buttons. You can obviously pop out the key just like this and the Skoda badging on the other side. Before the design, let's talk about the engine and the specifications. It gets offered in a 1 litre and 1.5 with manual and automatic for both the engine options. The 1 litre TSI produces a maximum power of 115 PS with a maximum torque of 178 Newton meters while the 1.5 turbo petrol produces a maximum power of 150 PS and a maximum torque of 250 Newton meters. You do not get any hydraulic starts or insulation on the hood. And this specific car is the 1 litre TSI automatic. Now let's look at the design. The first ex uh, difference that you see in the front profile of the Monte Carlo is the grille. It is all blackened out. There is no usage of chrome or even the body color for that matter and it's genuinely contrasting. Usually you would have seen the Monte Carlos in red color and red is definitely the standout feature and since you're going for the standout Monte Carlo the red makes sense but if you are going for a subtler tone and just want the red accenting in the interiors you can still contrast it with the blacks. I, this kind of reminds me of the top end variant of the Jeep Compass because again the white and black contrasting is really uh, prominent there as well. The headlights and the fog lamps is exactly the same which it had to be because those are anyways bison on and a black and white contrast so this was a grill i was talking about black dot piano accents with this slat design which is obviously normal to the kushak i really like this grill and it is very tastefully done it is just not unnecessarily design overload which they have done just to make it a monte carlo version and maybe sportier obviously the blacks and reds are you i like that they have not used red here i remember the gtx line of the kia does that which is not so subtle but this black overall looks really nice i mentioned the headlight being the same with these drls the turn indicators being halogen and uh led projector which is right there you can see the same crystal lighting which where the chrome lines reflect that white light which looks really really nice i love that squad element design the high beam light is also halogen which kind of pisses me off uh, it does not look good that yellow light in this contrast and this white lighting and the white black contrast just does not make sense you get a trapezoidal plastic grill with this black accenting which this black accenting is obviously peculiar to the monte carlo version this is a body colored or a matte plastic finish in the normal kushaks the skid plate also is a gloss piano black uh, black finish which is genuinely nice for the side profile this is where the things get really really interesting and a lot different the first one obviously is the wheel design some might like it some might not like it but we have to admit that it does give the kushak a really different stance and that is uh, what i think Skoda was going for in the monte carlo version now you get a proper monte carlo badging in black accenting right there where usually the indicators are placed on the lower variants of the cars so a little bit of history lesson for this one. There's a principality, a very small country known as Monaco, which has this area known as Monte Carlo, where a very famous Formula 1 race is held every year. And that's why the checkered flag. And this beautiful area of Monaco is located just near France. You get the ORVMs in black, gloss black finish to give it the contrast. The LED indicators are placed on outside of the mirrors. The similar treatment on the door handles with chrome and body colored or dual tone effect. The same plastic remains at the bottom of the doors. You do not get any chrome, which is obviously the case because there is no usage of chrome right here. You get blacked out roof rails, which are functional and a blacked out shark fin antenna as well. Even the roof is blacked out. You get a spoiler of sorts, an integrated spoiler in the body color, which is nice, and which I think uh, you also get in this normal Skoda Kushaks. Now for the wheel design. 
as i mentioned it is dual tone it is diamond cut people might have a love hate relationship i do believe that there's a reason why they have used a very different design i genuinely love how uh smartly they have approached this design it's sharp just like scoda's i really like how they have approached in a very different way but still not made it ugly or polarizing now for the back a very similar treatment i'm sorry because the space is so less uh, i not able to actually show you the rear in one shot but i'll cover the specifics one by one the integrated spoiler houses the stop lamp you get a rear defogger and a rear wiper the skoda badging that you see is similar but you get it in all black that's the difference the kushak badging is also in black and where the chrome line sits in the normal kushaks you get a black line which runs from end to end on the tailgate you get a rear parking camera with the rear parking sensors this is black dot which was normally black or a body colored this is completely gloss black finish you get trapezoidal fake exhaust treatment on the both sides you get as i mentioned the rear parking camera the tail light is completely same which is somehow problematic to me i really would have liked if they had done a little bit of uh changes in the headlight and the tail lamp so as to make it really different from the normal skoda kushaks because they are demanding actually a lot of premium over the style variant of the skoda kushak so that's that you get a uh, halogen turn gate and the reverse lamp and that's the normal tailgate this is the reflector which is obviously reminiscent of the normal kushaks as for the dimensions all the dimensions obviously remain the same so if you want to know the dimensions you can check out the other video where i have covered the different variant of the skoda kushak you will see on the top right now the boot is the same you get the same treatment the same things there is no lamp there is a hook why is there no lamp it's strange or uh, you get a first aid kit and the boot space is normal it the loading lip is also decent size the this is not an alloy this is a steel wheel which is kind of a problem because the other alloy designs are so uh, striking the steel wheel would just be very bland but any which ways you get a parcel tray the boot space is 385 liters which is not class leading or not even on the very lower side so it's okay now for the door pads it is plastic and leather leather is just there on the door pads with red stitching since this is the monte carlo and you have to have that sportier appeal one thing that i really miss in the monte carlo's interior and that is the scored out tvrs 245 fan inside me speaking is the non alcantara finishes on the door and the seats you only get leather on the door pads otherwise everything is plastic the door window everything remains very normal to the other kushak variants the speaker is mesh is nice it's integrated with the bottle holder it's really uh, inconspicuous so i really like that now this is where things get really interesting a lot of red accenting is there on the seats and on the dashboard we'll come to the dashboard in just a bit but the contouring the seat comfort is really nice i so wish that they could have used the same material that they did in the octavia rs245 it would have been so nice it would have in just a second uh, delivered all the things that i would have personally needed to justify that premium in my mind this is how the dashboard looks like so much black and red that it is a visual treat to some but a polarizing effect to some other people a se different segment now the leg space is nice this magazine holders on both the sides the thigh support is okay good i would have appreciated a tad bit more thigh support but that's just me being over uh, demanding now you get isofix child mounts uh, on the back seat and there's obviously a center armrest and a third headrest as well you get two cup holders just like in the normal kushak so there's nothing extraordinary about the armrest or the cup holders in the monte carlo variant as for the seats it's very identical to what you get in the other variants but the only difference is that leather finish with the red treatments this obviously remains the same like in the style so now you might be thinking that if i'm sitting in this car why do i need to spend around 70 80000 more in any of the variant combinations if suppose if i'm buying buying a 1 liter manual for style why would i want to spend around a lakh more on road for this well we'll see the things really get interesting a little bit more interesting in the front but yeah you get ac vents and the sockets and everything so i'll not be repetitive i'll not want to bore you because if you have checked the other video you'll want new details two type c usb sockets and the ac vents in all black no chrome whatsoever just the knurled finish chrome for the adjusters on the ac vents 
that was the rear seat experience for the Skoda Kushak Monte Carlo. The door handles, that chrome finish is really nice, very sturdy to hold. And since the Skoda, the doors have weight, they are chunky, they are nice to open and close. Red accenting near the door handles as well on the front. Again, no Alcantara finish, why, why, why? Uh, it just hard plastics, but still feel premium. Also, no creaky plastic or anything like that, which we have seen in the some cars of the Kushak, some reviewers mentioned that, but I haven't faced that creaky problem. So that's nice. You get a string to bolster your stuff in the bottle holder, the pens or tissues or stuff. Bottle holder is adequately sized. There's leather, but it's on the normal side on the, for the door handle. You do not get any electrical adjustment whatsoever for the driver's side adjustment, which is really a disappointment. They should have given that in at least this variant. You get metal pedals. Again, a cosmetic treatment specifically for the Monte Carlo. Typical squad like headlight leveler and headlight adjuster, red accenting, just like I mentioned, and similar AC vents, just like we have seen in the other variants. Now, being seated in this driver's side of the Monte Carlo is nice. One thing is clear that the experience of the driver is the most enhanced in comparison to the experience of other passengers in the Monte Carlo. Now you get the similar treatment for the Skoda steering wheel, which is the two-spoke design. The left houses the infotainment controls and the right houses the instrument cluster controls. Now this is the instrument cluster, which is very specific to the Monte Carlo. You'll think, why? This similar thing is the Skoda Slavi also, na? no? This one has that black and, black and red and a more sportier appeal, definitely. And primarily because of the red and black treatment. Other than that, the features remain the same. It's very fluid. It's very smooth. The moment you press any button, the moment you rotate the knurled knobs on the steering wheel, it responds and it responds really nicely. It gets all the vehicle information that you would need. It gets all the warning lights in a digital format. It gets the settings for the instrument cluster. The, you can look at the infotainment system, the music and the radio settings, the average speed, the range to empty, everything. Everything is right there. It also gets the lines in the spaces between so as to give it more theatrical and a really nice visual appeal. The space, the plastic uh, outside the instrument cluster. You get the paddle shifters as well for the automatic. So that's a genuinely nice touch. For the adjustability, you get a tilt and telescopic function for the steering wheel, which is nice. The two stocks are for the headlight and the wipers. And you do get auto headlamps in this variant, obviously. Now, this is how the dashboard looks like. There is no 8-inch with the physical buttons for the infotainment. You get a 10-inch screen, which is now the standard. Now, of course, in the Sclavia and the Kushak, an empty space, no speaker there. A lot of finishes, a lot of elements. Five elements, if I counted one, that's hard plastic, that's hard plastic, hard plastic. But a lot of treatment. So there's black finishing, dotted finish, that red accenting, chrome line running across the dashboard, hard plastics on the below, on the top. You get black accents around the AC vents as well. But this is nothing new. This is very similar to what we get in the normal Kushak. Similar controls for the hazard lamp and the lock and lock, the ventilated seats. You do get the ventilated seats, of course. A completely touch unit for the AC controls, which I am particularly not a fan of since the fourth generation Honda City. But again, they have all they have done this AC touch unit across the other variants of the Kushak as well. So nothing new of sorts but yeah if i have to look at this unit specifically not a big fan of the touch unit since i mentioned this is the automatic you get a leather finish knob with the automatic features you get a 12 volt socket with an electric charger the red accents run across the center console just like this which is nice seems to be a, an overkill and over design but still not polarizing or very weird to look at you do not get electric parking handbrake which is a miss to me you get very small cup holders and a black leather red stitch uh, accenting leather for the center console similar treatment just like you've seen in the other seats for the co-driver side as well now for the glove box you get a very simple glove box with adequate size you get a cool cooling function but there's no illumination in the glove box the bolstering is nice. The string on the co-driver side bottle holder is also there. Just a small thing for you to notice. For the sun visors, you get a mirror but no lamp on the co-driver side sun visor. And there is no mirror or no lamp for the driver side sun visor. So you being in the driver side, you cannot look at your face or adjust your makeup or uh, just set your hairstyle. Nothing. Uh, so the cabin lamp is 
white. It is LED treatment. You do get a sunroof. You do not get any sunglass holder because that space is just dummy. And these buttons are nice to use. They have good feedback. But the as for the sunroof, it is a small unit just like the other variants of the Kushak. It's not a panoramic sunroof and it only goes so far. So it's kind of on the smaller side given the competition because the Creta has been offering a proper panoramic sunroof for a few years now. And honestly, to justify that premium over the style, they should have given a panoramic sunroof in this variant. You also get an auto dimming IRVM in this variant of the Kush Soda Kushak. So practically, apart from the things that I mentioned being the new wheel alloy wheel design, the red accenting, the new grill, the seat accenting, it is pretty much a style variant. You do get adjustable headrests, no seatbelt adjusters. Even at this price point, even in the top of the Skoda Kusha, you do not get a seatbelt adjuster, which to me is a disappointment, honestly. In terms of seat comfort, Skoda has never disappointed in that regard. So good bolstering, good contouring and good cushioning. So I'm really comfortable even in the driver's seat. And that shouldn't be an issue if you're going on long drives or if you want to get a little sporty given that you went the Monte Carlo and you just want to just have fun with the car the comfort would not be an issue so now to summarize it gets all the style features plus this new red and black instrument cluster which is really a nice touch apart from that you get the new seat upholstery the blacked out orvms the roof rails the interior inserts the grill inserts and the stylish those 17 inch alloy wheels the metal pedals and what else, what else? Yeah, red ambient lighting is also new in this because the other variants of the Kusha do not offer a red color ambient lighting. And obviously the red ambient lighting makes sense here. One more thing is that this being the one liter variant, you do not get the red caliper accenting for the Monte Carlo, which is that is only exclusive to the 1.5 variant of the Kusha Monte Carlo. So even if you are buying the Monte Carlo, you still wouldn't get the red calipers, which really enhance the overall look and feel the Kushak Monte Carlo. Now as for the pricing, the last bit, it gets tricky here and I'll tell you why. The first thing is that this specific variant, the one liter automatic Monte Carlo costs around 1770, which is around 170 more expensive, 170,000 more expensive than the manual one liter Monte Carlo, which costs around 16 lakhs extra room. The 1.5 manual Monte Carlo is 1790 X showroom and the Monte Carlo 1.5 automatic would be a 1950 X showroom. That is the price. Now for the tricky part. The tricky part starts where we start to compare the pricing with the style variants. Just an example, the style 1 liter manual costs 1530 whereas style Monte Carlo 1 liter manual costs 16 lakhs X showroom. The, Mon the Monte Carlo 1 liter automatics is 1770, where the style 1 liter automatic is 70,000 cheaper, which is again a 17 lakh sex showroom. So essentially, all in all, all the variants uh, as compared to style are 70,000 more expensive. So your purchase decision should be around whether that 70,000 is justifiable or not for these exterior and interior cosmetic elements. Because other than that, only the feature is that the instrument cluster is digital now there are two real answers to this whether they make sense or not first obviously your discretionary income and your budget <laughs> second the practicality it it's definitely not practical but a case is a situation where you are a young person who has started earning and has been earning actually for three four years you have a really handsome salary or you have a good business and if you think that you want this uh, exterior and interior uh, bits where they enhance your personality and you really just like them go for it everything shouldn't be practical some things should be emotional and a car is an emotional factor so if you want to stand out and if you really like the Skoda Kushak the Monte Carlo would make sense if not if you are a person who just likes Skoda Kushak and you do not want the unnecessary attraction and unnecessary over designed elements you are very good staying in the style variant range with any of the engine configurations that you like. The Monte Carlo shouldn't be the top variant. It is just an optional variant over the style where it caters to a very niche and very targeted audience. And I really like that Monte Carlo is launched and Skoda has really taken a good step in catering to that audience. And 
also imposing their brand values and then brand imagery to the French Monte Carlo racing appeal and the sportier appeal, keeping very much that RS trend alive in the Skoda lineups. Although there's nothing RS and nothing uh, performance oriented about this, it's just exterior. So all in all, it is a fine old wine in a new bottle. So this was the variant of the Skoda Kushak Monte Carlo 1 liter automatic. Don't forget to like this video and drop a comment as to what do you think about this video. Also, whether would you buy one if you had a budget of say 15 to 20 lakhs, would you stick with the style variant of the Kushak or would you go for a different car altogether? So please drop a comment about that. Please oh please hit the subscribe button because that really encourages us to bring you more such car reviews and I get to go to the car showrooms with a lot of confidence having the opportunity to discuss another car with you all for the next 20-25 minutes. So keep watching Throttle Up. I really hope you like our content.